प्लीज कम गुड आफ्टरनून प्लीज सिट डाउन काइंडली टेल अस अबाउट योर सेल्फ सर माय नेम इज आशना चौधरी आई हैव डन माय स्कूलिंग फ्रॉम दिल्ली पब्लिक स्कूल गाजियाबाद आई हैव डन माय बैचलर्स इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर फ्रॉम लेडी श्रीराम कॉलेज फॉर वुमेन Uh, I am currently doing my masters in international relations from South Asian University. Uh, my hobbies are uh, yoga, jogging and reading. Yeah, follow us up here. Miss Ashna. Yes. <coughs> More than 17 years of the Indian Republic. Celebrated our Republic Day a few weeks ago. Tell us the state of the republic. Uh, now i don't want to keep it very open ended tell us the positives and the not so positives uh, sir uh, i would begin with the positives that india has been able to achieve one would be on the front of being the largest democracy in the world uh, second sir i would say we are doing good on the economic front with the initiatives like ease of doing business make in india initiative uh third sir i would say in terms of uh, in terms of the enrollment ratio in schools we have done very good um uh, fourth sir in terms of the environmental initiatives that we are taking uh, for instance uh, the for instance the renewable energy targets that we have taken up uh, have been commendable uh, so these are some of the positives that i can think of uh, in that india has achieved so far uh in terms of the challenges that india still faces include the problems the economic problems such as unemployment uh underemployment also known as disguised uh, employment so these are some of the problems that i can think of in economic realm in terms of uh environment i would say uh we are still facing a few challenges before us wherein uh, india out of the 30 most polluted cities in the world 21 come uh, 21 are in india in terms of pm 2.5 pollution levels so environment and in terms of environment also we need to gear up uh, another problem related to the social aspect i can think of is related to women safety so that is another problem that we are facing we uh, the police patrol vans are still missing from the uh, from the from the localities the the street lights are widely spaced so those are the problems that we face in terms of infrastructure also we need to uh, pace up and for that initiative such as pm gati shakti have already featured oh, in this year's right. budget you spoke you talked about pm gati shakti program yes sir tell us more about it Uh, sir pm gati shakti program has been uh, launched in 2020 and has also been given an impetus in this year's budget it talks about expediting the growth of infrastructure in india the allocation uh, i i cannot recall the exact Don't allocation worry about the allocation but that's it yes sir it also talks about the mo- mobilization of the existing resources uh, along with the creation of new resources for the infrastructural development okay you spoke about uh, climate uh, uh, issues uh, the prime minister in glasgow said that india will manage net zero emissions by 2070 yes do you think that is achievable sir i would say <coughs> seeing the progress that india has made uh, by uh, by expediting measures such as coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure for uh, in international solar being featured in international solar alliance uh, setting for ourselves the task of uh, generating 500 gigawatts of uh, renewable energy by 2030 if we expedite our measures we can certainly achieve those uh, targets but uh, given the pace that we are developing with the actual implementation of the schemes that have happened we really need to gear up our efforts about coal coal is the elephant in the room yes sir and our coal production is going to increase going to peak by 2040 2050 thereafter the coal mix in the energy uh, uh, equation will come down but uh, 
do you think coal will be a handicap major handicap a big handicap so india faces the the classic dilemma of development versus environment uh, conservation so uh, but uh, keeping in mind the climate equity debate and the and the debate wherein uh, we have the polluter pays principle as well as the sustainable development the principle. polluter is not paying it's only a principle yes sir well, let's uh, focus on coal you were talking about coal uh, so talking about the climate uh, the the equity debate i think coal is important for india's development uh, as india is a developing country and we have set for ourselves ambitious targets uh, targets such as achieving 5 trillion dollar economy so i think we will have to uh, we will have to face the reality that we require coal as of now for the for the development purposes so net still zero is we, net zero is difficult it is difficult thank you Sashan, tell us uh, news today. Have you read the newspaper? Uh, sir, I have uh, skimmed through the newspaper. Okay, so yes. tell me the three headlines of the newspaper you read. The front page. Uh, sir, uh, sir, one was related to the virtual digital assets, which have come under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Is in the front page? Which no, sir. It was not in the front page. I I, I said front page. Yes. Which newspaper have you read? Uh, sir, the Hindu. Okay. I have skimmed through it, so I I cannot recall the exact news items on the front page. Okay. Is there any news about China, Iran, and Saudi Arabia? Uh, yes, sir. What is the news? Tell us. Uh, sir, the news is that China is uh, trying to bridge the gap between Iran and Saudi Arabia, and. Uh, I did not. I have only read the headlines today. Uh, as of now, uh, in the evening, I'll read China it. China is trying detail. to reduce the gap. The That's gap between Iran and Saudi Arabia. That is Arabia. the only thing you have read. Uh, no, uh, sir. I have read uh, the the editorials. I have read. Okay. Yes, sir. And about uh, Australian Prime Minister's visit, what does it say today? Any idea? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, it was on the front page, and uh, it talks about uh, it talks about diaspora and the it, and the problems that the Indian diaspora is facing in Australia related to the attacks, racial attacks. Now, in UP, there was a shootout in Prayagraj some time back. Can you tell us what was the incident some days ago? I'm sorry, sir. I cannot recall. No, you are not aware of this gangster Rati Kamath's people killing a star witness in a murder case, no? Uh, sir, I have read the news, but I, I don't think I have enough material to substantiate on it. Tell me, what are the internal security challenges to India, please? Uh, sir, the internal security challenges to India stem from the, from the realm of economy related to money laundering. Uh, one of the challenges is that another one would be related to the rise of terrorism, uh, the uh, the separatism or the secessionist the act the uh, the coming into action of the secessionist forces would be another uh, threat that India is facing. Where is this secessionist forces? Uh, sir, they are said to be active uh, along the border areas such as uh, uh, Punjab. Uh, they are said to be active near Punjab. They are said to be active. In Jammu and Kashmir region as well. But what are the secessionist tendencies in Punjab? You are referring to the Punjab incident. Uh, you t you know? Can you tell me the details of the Punjab incident? No. Uh, sir, uh, the uh, sir, it it can be traced back to Operation Blue Star of 1984, wherein. Uh, no, no. Can you tell me about a recent incident in Punjab on this? No. Uh, no. Sir, it is connected with uh, it is connected with the killing of the the famous singer Siddhu Musewala, <coughs> and uh, upon that uh, the coming up of certain forces which are uh, being connected with the Khalistani movement as but well. Tell me, uh, supposing you become uh, you are selected in the IAS and you become district magistrate of Hapur, the place you belong to, and then. One day you go to the poorest of the poor village in your jurisdiction and you find the villages have nothing. They have thatched uh, houses, no electricity, no water, no food, 
no school, no hospital, no road, no job, no work, no agriculture. What are the first three things you will give to them in order of priority and under which schemes? Uh, so one would be uh, one would be education under Sarva Shiksha Abhyan. Uh, another would be health, uh, health uh, under uh, Ayushman Bharat uh, Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, access to healthcare. And so third would be uh, skill development under uh, Pr Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. But you tell me how many articles the Constitution of India has today? Uh, sir, the articles uh, were 395 and subsequently various amendments have been made. So how many today? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot recall. So who had designed the Indian tricolor? Sir, no I, idea. I cannot recall. How it is handled, or, or the red fort, on the Independence Day by the Prime Minister and on Republic Day by the President of India? National flag. Is there a different way of handling the flag? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll have to look into it. Achha, you are not you are not aware of, aware no, of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Sir. Mr. Mesing. <coughs> yeah, Mr. Ashna. Yes, sir. You come from Hapur. Huh? Yes, sir. Hapur is famous for what? Sir, Hapur is famous for its uh, textile industries. We mm. have 1400 power looms and uh, 120 medium scale industries as well in Hapur. Uh, it is also famous for its uh, for its low level, uh, low scale investment industries such as the, the papar making, pickle making, so these are also what Hapur is famous for. It is famous for its good mandi. Vegetable growth, growing area? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we, uh, we grow sugar cane and uh, are one of the largest producers of wheat in the country. Now every day, a lot of vegetables come to Delhi from Hapur. You are aware? Are you aware of that? I'm sorry, sir. Probably half of the supply of Delhi is by Hapur only. Yes, sir. There, there is a supply of uh, various harvested crops from Hapur to Delhi. Mainly vegetable crops. Okay, sir. Okay. <coughs> the children of the, your anthropology optional, sir. Yes, sir. Candidate. Children of the same parents have different facial features. Why? Uh, sir, it is related to the... Sir, it can be... Uh, it can be traced back to, uh, to two things. One would be the genetic factors and other would be the social factors. So the genetic factors relate to the different combination of the X and Y chromosomes and which features, which have been the more visible traits that have uh, featured in uh, Where the, it the happened, child. At what stage it happens? As you said, genetic thing. Yes, sir. What sir, stage does it happen? Sir, at the embryonic stage itself, the, uh, the expression of certain genes come up, whereas mm. the facial features develop later on. No, I mean to say where the difference happens. Feature comes in the embryonic stage, of course. Uh, sir, embryonic stage. Okay. Please give your opinion about the electoral bonds. Electoral bonds. Sir, electoral bond scheme was introduced in 2016. Uh, it basically, the, the premise for introducing the scheme was to bring, an, uh, to, to, uh, uh, was basically to 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 reduce the discrimination that is being done to certain members based on the uh, donation that they made to uh, political parties this was the stated aim of the electoral bond scheme however it is criticized mainly now for its n anonymity so th this is uh, what is this what is your suggestion uh, sir my suggestion related to electoral bond scheme would be uh, to make it uh, to make it more transparent and also for the political parties, there was Biju Janta Dal from Odisha that has uh, that has taken a step of uh, volunteer voluntarily revealing the the allocations or the donations that have been made to the party. So uh, these sort of transparency measures should be taken at the party level itself. No voluntary is a voluntary. Yes. Sir. It does not uh, get ensured. Yes. Sir. 
So in your opinion, this is okay or there is some problem with the bombs? Uh, so the problem stems from transparency. It is, uh, it is seen by various activists as a contravention to the uh, to the right to uh, to the transparency uh, transparency and the right to information act that was passed in 2005 so no right to information they are getting the details yes that which are uh, who is getting but they are not telling who is giving yeah. yes sir anyhow so it is not that good it should it needs improvement it needs improvement it certainly needs improvement sir okay do you think that up should be, should be divided so large state very difficult to administer. Do you think it should be divided into, if so, in how many parts? Uh, sir, there have been various demands to divide UP because it has become too big to administer. Uh, there have been demands. Uh, the, the demands firstly have been to divide it into two parts. Give your One. opinion only. Give your opinion. All right, sir. Uh, sir, I believe, uh, I believe it should be divided post uh, post various uh, studies uh, such as one would be related to when we are dividing it we should see the criteria of that we do not end up uh, bringing all the prosperous areas into one division such as the the division into Harith Pradesh was uh, was put up so that is one criteria that we need to look at another would be uh, to see whether we do not end up fostering the extreme feelings of identity uh, I identity uh, the sense of identity that might lead to various demands for uh, for the sep for uh, separatism or for further division. So these are the criteria that we need to keep in mind before dividing the state for administration. No, Uttarakhand uh, was created from UP. Yeah. This was not kept in mind at that time, and uh, it is doing well, better compared to UP. Uh, sir, uh, with Uttarakhand, there were various demands to divide the state also. Uh, what was the basis for dividing Uttarakhand? Uh, sir, geography has been one of the prominent basis for the division of the state. 13, uh, 13 districts were uh, were separated from Uttar Pradesh. So there are plain districts also, Rudrapur is plain? Yes, sir. So these are the buffer zones between the hilly and the, uh, the, the plain areas. I think it was based on the culture. Sir, culture would be another prominent Same, feature. particular language, Pahari language there. Uh, sir, I would say uh, the Pahari language also has various uh, subdivisions into it. There, there are Gadhwalis and there are uh, other areas as well. So, uh, I, the culture definitely, the hill culture is different from the plain culture. So, in that sense also we can see. Uh, okay, last question is a situation. Listen carefully, there are three children, first child has made a flute, flute is a mouth organ and uh, he doesn't know how to play it. Second child is there, he knows how to play it but he doesn't know how to make it and there is a third child, he doesn't know how to play it, he also doesn't know how to make it. So these are the three children and a flute has been made and now they have a dispute over who will have it. The third child is from economic weaker section and he says that uh, it should be given to him because he doesn't have a toy to play with. Second child says that he only knows how to play it, make full use of it, should be given to him. And first child says that since he has made it, it should remain with him. And they come to you, if you have to give to one of them, to which child will you like to give? Uh, sir, I would give it to the third child because he has never had access to it. We do not know whether he turns out to be a great... No, no. Question was to whom you will give it. I didn't ask why. So, do, it is part of the feedback actually I am giving in advance. Okay, don't uh, give answers which are not corresponding to the question. Isn't it? Question is only to whom you will give. So, okay, third child. I then you should keep quiet. Third child, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ashna Chowdhury, yes, sir. we met here on the 19th of December. Yes, sir. Since then, some important events have been celebrated by India, some important days have been observed. One of them was Parakram Devas. Can you tell me something about it? When? What was the occasion? 
सर पराक्रम दिवस इज सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड दिसंबर आई माइट बी आई माइट नॉट बी श्योर अबाउट द डेट थर्ड दिसंबर यस सर आई आई माइट नॉट बी श्योर अबाउट ट्वेंटी थर्ड जनवरी सर आई बट वाई ओके वॉट इज दिन सर इट इट इज द बर्थ डे ऑफ नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस नाउ आई एम आस्किंग यू बिकॉज ऑन दिस डेट दिस टाइम ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ पराक्रम दिवस Prime Minister made some important announcements. What were they relating to? It's a nationally important event, so I'm asking. I'm sorry, sir. I cannot. You don't know. Me. All right. Now, I see from your dad that you have said that your father is in government service, private public sector. <clears throat> Against if retired, indicate the post. You, you say that not applicable. So he's still in service. Yes. But you have not indicated the post held by him. It's blank. Uh, sir, he's a professor, so he caters to the. But there's no mention here. This is what I'm drawing your attention to. It's blank. Yes, sir. Now, again, uh, continuing with your dad, you have a BA honors in English. Yes, sir. And you mentioned that you are doing your post grad in international relations. but you chose neither english nor international relations instead you chose anthropology yes, why is that uh, sir i uh, it is connected to my reason <coughs> for not choosing english literature as my optional because uh, i began with english literature as my <coughs> optional but uh, midway i realized that 84% of the syllabus of english literature already coincides with my graduation syllabus so i did not already uh, already being repetitive in the general study subject but it helped you you have already done it so most people do that they yes. study international relations and they take that as their optional so you didn't choose english literature as your subject uh, sir it was not motivating for me to go back to the same text again and again so all right now wanted... do you still you know sort of uh, keep in touch with english literature did you study shakespeare yes sir what plays did you study in your graduation uh, sir macbeth macbeth Can you recite a few lines from Macbeth? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> sir. Uh, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day until the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have complete now, and all our yesterdays complete. <coughs> have lighted fools the way to dusty death who says these lines i'm sorry sir i don't know any other shakespeare in play you read uh sir as you like it as well but i cannot recall much from there okay. any poet uh sir uh edmund spencer john don spencer oh they were cool. yeah. more uh content more later on romantic poets uh sir romantic poets william blake robert burns um i uh, i Can have you also read some lines from robert burns uh sir i i remember he has he has written uh, the anthem the national anthem of ireland is from uh, robert burns poems but i cannot recite you can don't can't recall any poem uh, any poem at all that you studied in english Three years you did your honors. Yes, sir. Not one point. Uh, sir, uh, we never buy hard them. Something uh, from Keats, Robert Dalkey. Poetry is. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Now, anyway, uh, a little while ago, while talking to our chairman, you mentioned that uh, you had followed the newspapers and you referred to the news relating to Saudi-Iran relations. So can we just discuss that what exactly is the news item what has happened any development uh, sir i have not read it in detail i uh, i mentioned that i have only read the headline is headlines. are they going to war saudi and iran are they normalizing relations are they establishing diplomatic relations what is happening Uh, sir, uh, I get a sense that they are trying to normalize the relations with they China. They have signed the treaty for that. Okay. They have signed the treaty to normalize relations. And where did that happen? In which country? 
sir, uh, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot recall. Okay, China. it was in China. Now, any other important news event relating to China which pertains to Xi Jinping? Did you come across any news item? Xi Jinping. Who is Xi Jinping? Uh, sir, Xi Jinping is the, is the Prime Minister of China. Prime Minister of China? Are yes. you sure? Yes, sir. No, he's the President. Okay, he's the President. Uh, so, anything relating to him? Very important, very important event. He's got That's a third sir. term. Okay, sir. He's got a third term. Okay. The Communist Party has given him a third term. How do you think that impacts us? How does that affect India? Uh, sir, we have seen China, uh, China r rising to power uh, under Xi Jinping, uh, achieving great economic uh, uh, economic success, but also uh, but also uh, initiating initiatives like uh, Belt and Road Initiative that uh, that. Uh, caters to the expansionist tendencies in China. Also, the border dispute that is happening with China. Uh, so the also, border dispute will harden and probably we will continue to face problems there. Uh, yes, but sir. is there any way you think that Xi Jinping's third term could end up benefiting us? Uh, sir, the talks that we have, we are already uh, brokering, uh, that we are already uh, in the process of would continue, so we would no, not in have In the to context of manufacturing locating to India, is there a possibility in that context? Manufacturing yes. from other countries? Yes, sir. How? Why? What is your analysis? I'm trying to see what, how you read the situation. So there, uh, there is a trust deficit that the world poses in China today, and uh, that is also related to the uh, that is also related to the leader of China. Uh, leader of China has a lot of uh, take in that, and I think that the investments which are moving away from China would end up uh, would end up being uh, being cornered by con developing countries such as India, Bangladesh, and Vietnam. Did you also follow the uh, visit of the Australian Prime Minister? Yeah, you referred to that. What's his name, by the way? Uh, sir Albanese. Full name, please? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Okay, Anthony. Anthony okay, Albanese. Anthony. Now, uh, what are the factors which are bringing India and Australia closer together? Uh, sir, Indo-Pacific would be uh, one, area that, uh, one area which is of common interest to both the countries. So, so what factors bring us closer? That's what I want to know. Uh, sir, uh, the the rise of China in the Indo-Pacific uh, that that uh, that uh, holds a great domain for economic as well as strategic uh, power for both the countries, India and Australia. Uh, Talking of the Indo-Pacific, we have been conducting the Malabar exercise. There. Yes, sir. Did you read any news item about the next edition of the Malabar exercise? Which country will host it? I'm sorry, sir. I cannot recall. All right. Well, Australia is going to host it. And this was announced during this visit. Uh, now, earlier we also spoke about China and Saudi Arabia and Iran. China hosting that meeting with us. Saudi Arabia is a member of the GCC. What is the importance of the GCC? Uh, so, GCC stands for Gulf Cooperation Council. Uh, GCC holds a great importance in terms of the uh, in terms of bringing West Asian countries together. <coughs> so it not only brings the West Asian countries together, but also uh, but also states its stance that it brings the Islamic countries also together. So uh, bringing the Islamic countries and the West uh, Asian that countries. That is the OIC. <coughs> the OIC brings the Islamic countries together. The GCC is. Only some countries. How many members does the GCC have? I'm sorry, sir. I cannot recall. You don't know, uh, sir. It's uh, I can try to name some. It's Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Iran, Iraq. No, please don't even try to guess. You're way off. Iran and Iraq are not members. No, it was formed against Iraq. Threat from Saddam Hussein. <coughs> And today, Iran is a threat. So, it's, it, these are not members. However, some of the GCC countries have normalized relations with Israel. 
Yes, sir. Can you tell me something in this regard? What is the agreement called? And which are these countries? Uh, sir, uh, Abraham Accords uh, yes. are the series of talks between Israel and UAE. Yes. Uh, another would be Jordan. Jordan has also tried to, but I am no, not But which country signed the Abraham Accords? Uh, sir, uh, UAE is and Israel. And? Israel. Yeah, but one other Gulf country also signed. That's what I'm I, I need to look into it, sir. Uh, and what are the Camp David Accords? Uh, sir, it it was these were the accords between Jordan and Israel. Are you sure? Uh, Are you guessing? Sir, I am guessing because no guessing, it, not really. yes, that's sir. a dangerous guess. <laughs> okay, last question. Uh, <clears throat> did you follow the Republic Day parade? And who was our chief guest? Uh, sir. Uh, I cannot remember a lot, but the chief guest was uh, uh, was Egyptian Prime Minister. President. President. Egyptian President. You don't know his name, of course. Uh, no, sir. Why are Egypt and India coming closer together? What is What factors made us invite him as chief guest? Why is Egypt important for us? Uh, sir, uh, one would be the uh, the sea lines of communication that pass through uh, Indian Ocean and uh, Egypt being one of the parties that are near to Indian Ocean. Uh, another would be the 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 minerals or the the mineral wealth of uh, Africa as a continent in general. So that would be another. When you say the sea lanes which pass near Egypt, you're referring to the Suez Canal, isn't it? The Suez Canal. The Suez Canal connects which seas? Uh, sir, uh, sir, the it connects the Blue Nile River with the White Nile River. No, 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 no. It connects two seas. And Blue Nile and White Nile join at Khartoum, so it's nothing to do with the Suez Canal. <coughs> Suez Canal connects <coughs> with seas. I'm sorry, sir. Because you refer to the sea lanes and the Indian Ocean and connectivity and all. That's right. You don't know. No, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is Ashka your interview with us is over? Uh, kindly wait for some time. We'll call you for feedback. All right, sir. Thank you, sir.